The South Carolina Hall of Fame was founded in Myrtle Beach in 1973 to recognize and honor contemporary and past citizens who have made outstanding contributions to South Carolina's heritage, history, and progress. Robert Mills was born in Charleston, South Carolina in 1781. Referred to as America's first architect, he studied under James Hoban, Henry Latrobe, and Thomas Jefferson. He was the first architect for the federal government and creator of the Washington Monument in Washington, D.C. Mill's father was a tailor in Charleston, lost money and social status during the revolution, and as a result, Mill started life with no capital. At that time, architecture was not an organized profession, but it was something that Mills thought was needed. Mills went to Washington, D.C. just before he was 20 to study under James Hoban, who was then building the White House. Mills apprenticed to Hoban, and there he met Thomas Jefferson in Washington. And Jefferson had a lifelong interest in architecture and took young Mills under his wing, and that really got Mills started. Mills did drawings for Jefferson, drawings of Monticello. He didn't design Monticello. And when the construction of the White House came to an end and Mills' work with Hoban came to an end, Jefferson placed Mills with Benjamin Henry Latrobe as a draftsman and apprentice. And Latrobe was an Englishman who had immigrated to America and was at that time the best trained and most successful practitioner of architecture in America. Mills stayed with Latrobe for four years and then went out on his own, designing Monumental Church in Richmond, Virginia. There was a theater fire here December 26, 1811, and 72 people perished in the fire. And so the community got together to raise the funds to build a monument that then became an Episcopal church. The design for the church that Mills chose was what he considered to be a lecture church. So Many people would call it a low church, not a lot of ornamentation, very simple design, and the focus would have been found directly on the minister who was preaching. But little did he know, this triumph would not come without consequences. The construction of the church was significant to Mills because he beat out his mentor Latrobe for the design. Latrobe did believe that he had the commission, and members of the fundraising team spoke to both Mills and Latrobe separately, and Latrobe always believed that Mills had seen his work because there were so many similarities between the two designs. Latrobe was upset with Mills winning the commission and it did cause a rift in their relationship. Elements of old world design are showcased in Mills' work. Mills and designers in his time looked back on democratic Greece and Republican Rome as the origins of American political and moral philosophy. He believed that architecture told a story and influenced us, that we shape our buildings and then our buildings shape us. Mill's major theme, his major idea was permanence. Mills believed that if you spent money on architecture, you had a moral obligation keep people safe and to protect not just them physically, but to protect their investment for generations. And so Mills made a reputation very quickly for fireproof construction. Hi, I'm Faye Jensen at the uh, South Carolina Historical Society. Uh, the Society is housed in the Robert Mills Fireproof Building in Charleston. Mills designed the building to house the records and county offices for Charleston. It was built in 1826, and by that time Mills had pretty much perfected his technique for fireproofing. The first thing he did was to stipulate that the entire building be surrounded by open space that would act as a fire break. And for that reason, the building now stands uh, with two sides to the city park, and the other two sides to Meeting and Chalmers Street. Now, when he got to the point of, of constructing the building, Mill stipulated that as little wood be used as possible. The floors are gray flagstone. All of the interior walls are a foot thick. They are made of plaster on masonry. And the windows have metal casings and metal shutters on them. 
Additionally, Mills wanted to allow as much natural light and air circulation into the building as he could. That would cut down on the use of fireplaces, oil lamps, and candles. So he designed the building with eight entrances, large arched windows, and this beautiful cantilevered staircase that is lit by skylight. Another fine example of Mills' fireproof construction is the Burlington County Prison in Mount Holly, New Jersey. It was the most modern prison in the country. Um, when he put the plans forward, he also put in about an eight-page document on how each area should be operated and why he did what he did. When the building was designed, um, every cell was equipped with a window so that light could come in during the day since obviously there was no electricity at the time. But they adjusted the size of the window based on the crime. So the smaller the window, the worse the criminal that stayed in that room. The entire building has arched ceilings through it. Um, the first reason that they were put in was for sound. Uh, the warden's office and his apartment were centrally located in the building. For the most part, you can hear what's going on throughout the entire building from that location. Um, so you didn't always have to have a person to monitor what was going on through the whole place. And the other thing that it was put in for was for um, ventilation purposes and help the air circulate throughout the building. It was supposed to try and keep it a little bit cooler in the summer and warmer in the winter months. It was also his idea to put a workshop inside the building so they didn't just go out and do farm work. They learned a trade, um, mostly woodworking skills, that they could hopefully use when they were released from jail to better themselves. He also um, decided on where the dungeon should be located in the building, putting it up on our third floor as opposed to a basement where most people would assume a dungeon would be. Um, since it was for first degree murder, he decided it should be on the third floor so that they were watched more often and it was harder to escape from the building. When Robert Mills was having the building built, um, the Board of Freeholders for Burlington County offered him $300 for the plans in the, of building it. And partway through, they ran out of materials and ran out of money to buy any more materials. So they called Robert Mills in for a meeting and asked him, could we give you only $150 as opposed to your original $300 so that we can buy the materials to have your building finished? And he said yes. So unfortunately, he only got half of what he was promised, but he was able to finish the structure. Mills was always designing a variety of structures. He always did residential architecture, but it was a sideline. His first major public work was the Washington Monument in Baltimore, built in 1814, right after the War of 1812. It was the first major monument to George Washington. During Mill's lifetime, the architectural profession was not organized and Mills had a difficult time finding work. There were only two periods in his career when he had stable employment or a check coming in, so to speak. Um, the first period was in 1819. He was hired by the state of South Carolina to help build the canals and courthouses and jails throughout the state. During this time, Mills also compiled a book of county surveys entitled The Atlas of South Carolina. Then in 1830, Andrew Jackson is elected president. Jackson was a South Carolinian and a Democrat like Mills, and Mills went to Washington and very quickly found himself part of the Jackson administration. I think Mills was successful in giving a concrete form that is an architectural form to his and Jefferson and others' idea that public buildings should be an appropriate expression of public purpose. Mills built the first marble building in Washington. And today, 
Washington is a city of marble buildings, temples of democracy, if you will. Mills designed and superintended the construction of the U.S. Treasury Office, which is still in use by the Treasury Department. He designed and superintended construction of most of the U.S. Patent Office, a building that is still in use, um, although it's now used as a museum. Mills designed and superintended the early construction of the Washington National Monument. Mills was multifaceted. He had a wonderful career as a writer. He traveled extensively. He had a wonderful family life, um, a committed marriage and children. He was persistent and he adhered to his ideal even when others around him insisted that he change the way he, he was doing things, he did not. He didn't compromise his ideals. In the mid-1830s, Mills won a competition for the design of the Washington National Monument. Due to political and financial strain, work stopped on the structure, leaving Mills unable to see his work completed before his death in 1855. The last few years of Mills' life are rather sad. He became ill in his early 70s. He's lying in his bed and his obituary said, looking out of his window, he could see the stump of his monument rising from the mud. He became deranged and died. He was buried in an unmarked grave in the Congressional Cemetery and the American Institute of Architects erected a monument to Robert Mills there in the 1930s.